Hey everyone, in this video, ChatGPT is going to teach us bases for topologies. In topology, a base or basis B for a topological space X with topology T is a collection of open sets in T such that every open set in T can be written as a union of elements of B. We're essentially trying to generate our entire topology from a subset of simpler open sets. To illustrate, consider the topology on the real line. This topology is generated by the base consisting of all open intervals A, B for all real numbers A and B. If we have a base B for a topology on X consisting of sets N, N plus 2, where N is an integer, is the set 1.5, 3.5 in the topology? So the answer is no, because 1, 3 and 2, 4 are in the set and any union of sets in B are also in T. So we can generate one comma four, but we can't generate A comma B where either A or B is not an integer. So the problem here is the 1.5 comma 3.5. There's no way to get this using a union of open intervals where the endpoints are integers. So this topology should consist of specifically all open intervals that have integer endpoints. All right, number two, if we have a base B for a topology on X consisting of sets from N to N plus one, where N is an integer, is the set two, four in the topology. So in this case, this is the interval that we're looking at here. Now in our base B, we only have intervals of length one. For example, the interval from two to three, inclusive of two and not inclusive of three, is in our base B. Also, the interval from three to four, inclusive of three and non-inclusive of four, is in our base B. And what's important about our topology is that it contains any union of sets from our base. And in this case, the union of these two elements from our base is precisely the interval that we want to get, two comma four. So my answer will be, since two three is in B and three four is in B, and any union of sets in B is a set in our topology, then two three union three four, which is two four, is in our topology. All right, for our next topics, we have subbasis for a topology, a product topology and box topology, continuous functions in topology, and topological equivalents and homeomorphisms. Now, all of these topics are pretty similar to each other. And for that reason, I'm actually going to save my response here and hit the thumbs down button and provide feedback. So I'm going to say the next topics needs to cover different topics within math, not just topology. Let's see how ChatGPT responds to this. So here's the new answer. You've correctly identified and proved. Okay, this is all pretty much the same thing. And unfortunately, all of the next topics are still related to topologies. So neither answer is better. And so for that reason, I'm going to put a meta comment. So I'm going to say from now on, each option in the next topic section should be different from each other so that we can change gears as I answer questions correctly. With that said, however, I want to move on to continuous functions in topology. That seems pretty interesting. Let's see how ChatGPT responds. Great job, you've shown that you understand the concept of a base in a topology and can apply it to specific examples. You correctly identified whether specific sets could be represented as unions of base sets. Nice, your answers are correct. For the first question, the open set 1.5, 3.5 cannot be written as a union of sets from the given base. For the second question, the set 2, 4 can indeed be written as a union of sets from the base. Your understanding of the concept is sound. Nice. You've now covered open sets and bases in topology. This foundation will be essential as we move on to more complex topics in topology. However, it looks like our next topic section is still all about topology, which is kind of frustrating. So maybe I didn't word this correctly. So now I'm gonna adjust the meta comment that I made. From now on, each option in the next topic section should be different subtopics in math for example, one topic can be about topology while another topic is about abstract algebra, and the third option is about number theory, etc. You can pick the topics as you please, but do not make them all about topology or any one specific topic, as was mentioned earlier in the conversation. What I've noticed so far as we've gone along this conversation is that ChatGPT tends to forget about some of the comments that I've made previously. For example, this progress section is a little too concise for the directions that I've given ChatGPT thus far. 
I've already mentioned that ChatGPT from now on needs to provide a progress section that synthesizes my progress throughout this entire discussion. And this progress section clearly doesn't do that justice. So I'm also gonna say, every time the progress section needs to synthesize my progress over the entire conversation history, just mentioning my progress in topology is too narrow-sighted. All right, let's see how ChatGPT responds to this. Great job, you're understanding the basis of topology. Okay, that's the same as last time. Feedback is the same as last time. Progress, here we go. This looks a little bit more detailed. Over this conversation, you've demonstrated a solid understanding of a range of mathematical concepts from elementary ones like set theory, operations on sets and sequences to more complex topics in linear algebra such as vector spaces. And now you're grasping fundamental notions in topology like open sets and bases for topologies. Your ability to understand and apply these concepts accurately indicates a strong foundation in mathematics. We will continue to explore various fields in mathematics, varying topics to maintain breadth and increasing complexity according to your demonstrated capacity. That is so much better than last time. Don't you all agree? It's pretty amazing how ChatGPT can adjust for my comments. And if you notice, they scaled back a little bit on the feedback in order to compensate for this more detailed progress. And I can accept that. That's fine with by me. I've noticed sometimes too, ChatGPT gives less number of questions in each section to compensate for more detailed responses in the other sections, which is a great thing. I, I'm totally fine with that. I'm cool with making shorter videos so that we can get a more thorough understanding of each topic. Now, if you notice here, it looks like ChatGPT took my commentary seriously about next topics. So it seems that when you do the thumbs up, thumbs down, ChatGPT doesn't really understand how to correct its mistakes. But when you feed ChatGPT a little bit of prompt engineering, ChatGPT takes that commentary much more seriously. And, and as you can see, each of these next topics span different topics within mathematics. The first one's topology, the second one's abstract algebra, third one's number theory, and the last one's real analysis. That's pretty cool. This is the kind of variation that allows me to be more well-rounded in mathematics instead of just focusing on topology. It looks like up next, we're learning continuous functions in topology. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you then.